Ghost hunting essential, Dutch courage. My name's Elliot Cowan and I play Sam in 222. And Sam is an astronomer. He's a sort of scientist, a rational man, who's recently had a baby with his wife, Jenny. And he's been away for a few days um, on a dark sky island looking at stars. And he's come back to find his wife thinks that there's a ghost in their new, extent, in their new house that they've just extended. And being a rational man, he uh, has real difficulty in believing her. And I play Jenny, the wife who has heard the activity. And, um, and I think their relationship is, is one where Sam has, throughout their relationship, explained life, explained everything. But when it comes to ghosts and, and what's going on, it's something that, you know, he cannot explain or he's very quick to explain away and she's adamant about what she has experienced. I play Lauren. I play Ben. And Lauren and Ben are dating and they've come to have dinner at Sam and Jenny's house. While they're at that dinner, Jenny reveals to them that she thinks there's a ghost in the house. Sam doesn't think ghosts exist. There's maybe varying opinions about whether or not they're are ghosts or not and over the course of the night Jenny has asked Ben and Lauren to stay until 222 which is when she thinks she hears the ghosts so the audience is also invited to stay with us until we reach that point in the play to figure out whether or not the house is haunted <laughs> I don't know the answer to that question you but you're right I agree with you we are we are as people obsessed with the supernatural, I guess it's just because it's it just goes back to trying to handle the inevitable end of life. We've always got an obsession with that. It's always following us around, no matter what we do and where we go. So, no matter what is happening in the world, no matter what's in vogue and what's you know tasty at the time. Uh, I don't know why I said that. Oh, <laughs> I went for it. Um, there will always be an obsession with spooky stuff. Life after death, what happens next, what's, you know. Because nobody really knows. No. You, know? you can't know. That's the you annoying can't. thing. Yeah, that's the worst part about it. Well, you know what? I've not said this before, but just before go getting this job, I was going up for all sorts of things. And I have been up for more spooky, horror, religious-based ghost story films and texts, self-tapes and stuff, for the last three months than ever before really? in my career. To such a point, I was like, it's weird, this is another ghost story, another movie that wants, whatever. And I thought to myself, why is this happening? And I think, subconsciously, societally, there's this kind of thing going on with COVID, the unseen threat to all of us over the last two years that is being somehow zeitgeisted in these stories. You know, it's a ghost in this story, sure, and all these other movies I read. But I think it's about our anxiety about what we can't see and which is out there threatening us. We don't know if it's on our hands or in our houses, but it's threatening us all, all the time. And we got used to that. And this play brilliantly expunges that. It's a cathartic experience with good fun and a good outcome, well, an outcome we can all deal with and walk at home feeling satisfied with. Unlike we can most days when we go to school to drop off our kids or go to work or get on the tube, it's still hanging over us. And I think this is a good way of expunging that fear. Yes. Not to get too heavy, but you know. It's a slippery slope off. Believe in ghosts or not next, the earth is flat. I would say that I have had a supernatural experience. However, when I was speaking to Danny, the writer, I, li I felt myself just kind of brush over it yeah. as I was stirring it. He is the master of detecting the real, yeah. I think. Yeah. I was in my mum's bed, so her old cottage was built on the entrance of a, to a graveyard. Mm. Uh, and I was in her bed one night, I'd woken up, gone to the loo, went back upstairs, I was awake, and all of a sudden the room went freezing cold, and then there was just this intense heat, like a compression, all over my body. Um, and I can remember sort of I don't know if I vocalised it or if it was in my head asking, is that you, Nan? There was a yes back. Is that you, Grandad? That you know, was a yes back. Is that you? Are you with Sarah June? There was a yes back. What was the yes back? I don't know. I can't explain it now. But right. also because of distance and time, you kind of, yeah. I don't, um, I don't want to make it something that's not so. Uh, and then all of a sudden, as soon as that final yes came, everything just went. <sighs> and then, and I literally, and I didn't feel scared or anything. It was just a very weird experience, but I was, wide away. No. Wow. 
I've had spooky things happen, but not a ghost. But yeah, my imagination, unfortunately, slash fortunately, is very big. So it can run away with me at times, but I've never seen proof. I think I would be so shocked and scared if I saw a ghost. If I actually saw a ghost, if I was alone in a room and a ghost turned up, I think I'd like instantly faint. I think like my body would just <laughs> shut down. Just like, oh, oh God. It would be so scary. <laughs> God, I don't know. I'd probably do something super pedestrian, just be like, hi. Yeah. So, so yeah. cool. Yeah. Just chat with them. Yeah, why not? What's the worst that can happen? <laughs>